Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We got more Rome 2 siege battles here. I hope you guys are ready. We've got a 3v3 siege battle here in the city of Tolaferdum. This battle was sent in by one of the contenders, Demonic Flame. Big thanks to Demonic for sending in the replay, guys. And if anyone wants to see their own battles on the channel, I've got a Discord you guys can join. There's a link down below in the video description. Without wasting any time, let's take a view at the contenders and the armies they have brought to the field. Starting us off with the attackers, we have Massilia, played by Bandit, fielding a Massilian Hoplite General, two Celtic Warriors, three Axe Warriors, two Massilian Thurio Spears, eight Thorax Swordsmen, three Mercenary Gallic Hunters, and one Peltist. And next up, Rome, played by Grom, fielding a General's Bodyguard, four Hastati, one Triari, one First Cohort, five Evocati Cohort, two Legionary Cavalry, three Auxiliary Syrian Archers, and one Giant Ballista. And next up, we have Macadon, played by Sultan007, building a Royal Peltist General, six Militia Hoplites, two Thorax Swordsmen, three Thurio Spears, two Foot Companions, two Slingers, two Light Peltists, and a Greek Onager. And on to the defending side, we have Iceni, played by Demonic Flame, fielding a Heroic Nobles General, one Levy Freeman, one Ambusher, five Swordband, seven Chosen Swordband, and four Britain Slingers. And next up we have Seleucid, played by Wraith, fielding an Indian Armored Elephant's General, two Eastern Spearmen, five Hillmen, three Thorax Swordsmen, two Thorax Pikemen, one Shieldbearer, and four Syrian Heavy Archers. And finally we have Swaby, played by Atnes, fielding a Swordmaster's General, three additional Swordmasters, five Club Levy, one Bloodsworn, one Berserker, one Hexbearer, two Spearwall, and four Longbow Hunters. And guys, we've got the army comps out of the way, so I have to say it. Make sure you guys have got your snacks, drinks, and in your comfy chair. We've got a long, nearly hour-long battle today, so the players are ready to face off, and the battle is about to begin. Alrighty, folks, and with the army comps out of the way, we are ready to do battle. Here in the city of Tolaferdum. Right out the gate, let me go ahead and say that this is the victory point here for this settlement on large. We've got the nice Stonehenge here. Got some nice elephants over here as well from Seleucid, just kind of lining himself up for a perfect, beautiful shot. Look at that. So pretty. Elephants in front of Stonehenge. Never thought I'd see the day. All right. So let's take a look at the attackers here. The attackers are kind of forming up together. We do have some giant ballista here from Rome opening fire on the city, firing at the wall there. We've got some foot companions and a lot of militia hoplites here from Macadon. They have brought a lot of galleries. Are these what these go? Galleys? Gallery. Yeah, gallery. Brought a lot of those up. They are useful. They can shield your troops. We'll see how Macadon uses those. We also have another Thurial Spear over here by himself. So we do have some ambushers there from Iceni. We'll see what he's able to do there. But kind of together here, Rome and Macadon. And then we have Massilia over here with lots of siege towers and lots of sword and axe infantry ready to go and scale the walls here. From the defender's point of view, we have a few Seleucid tier 1 troops up here at the front. Kind of like assisting, I would say, and just like the front line. But it seems like this area here is mostly going to be defended by Iceni, and this area here will be defended by Swaby. We do have the reserves back here, as you can see, and I think Seleucid has been tasked with defending the final point along with very few Swaby troops. So it seems Iceni is probably going to be the main frontline holding here. And everybody else is kind of just like support. But we do have some Eastern Spearmen moving up here from Seleucid. And so far, not a whole lot going on. They are just opening fire on the walls and kind of hitting some of this sword band back here. Macadon is actually moving up lots of militia hoplites. Three units. One has a one's on a ram. Looks like he's turned this way to go towards that gatehouse over here. We do have the ambushers there waiting, so we'll see if they're going to go into these hoplites, or if they're going to come back here and attack these Thurio Spears. 
But other than that, not a whole lot of movement from the attackers. Do have some Onager here, the Greek Onager from Macedon. Hasn't fired anything yet, I don't think. Really just hoping Rome's Ballista knocks down the walls. But so far, a rather peaceful beginning to what will probably be a gruesome assault. You know, the calm before the storm. Oh, uh, we do got some action here. We got the ambushers moving towards the Thurio Spears. And they see it. They're going to go ahead and drop the, the gallery. And they're going to pull out of the pull out of there. They're going to form shield or square formation. Ambush is going to charge in. Thurio Spears losing decisively. They've already lost over 30 men, and they've been engaged for probably about less than 10 seconds. We do have some militia hoplites that have dropped the ram, and they're moving up to assist. We do have slingers here walking towards the gate, or walking towards the wall here. Don't know exactly what they're doing. Maybe Macadon gave him the attack order to attack a unit on the wall, and they just kind of followed as the other unit retreated. But back over here, we've got the Militia Hoplites now closing in. Wow, these ambushers, nearly 50 kills, and they've only lost 8 men. They're going to go ahead and fall back there before the Hoplites are able to reinforce. They are getting shot at by this arrow tower up here. And he's actually going to fall back his ambushers, now losing 10 men. But this Militia Hoplite is now going to be getting shot by three arrow towers. And they're all shooting two arrows at a time. That's six arrows at a time going out. This, this Militia Hoplite is going to get picked apart. But there he goes. He's going to go ahead and retreat the unit. Ambushers are going to get the attack. The attack order to chase them once again. Got myself a nice drink here. Told you guys, bring your snacks and your drinks. I've got myself some nice, cool lemonade. Don't understand, it's October already, and it's still hot outside. It's like 90 degrees where I am currently residing. It's usually about 90 degrees every day for some reason. Sun's still shining, beating down, and it's hot. And it sucks. But, without a doubt, the lemonade will come in handy. Might make myself some popcorn later, too. Maybe watch a nice movie. Braveheart's out. Braveheart just got added to uh, HBO Max for all you people who have HBO Max. Anybody interested? Braveheart, great movie if you haven't seen it. It is quite long. It's about three hours. But it is worth every minute. just kind of like the Patriot. I forgot the actor who plays the main character. I think it's Mel Gibson. Uh, he also plays the the main character in uh, the Patriot. I think it. I think it's Mel Gibson. But dude, he's just ah, it's great. Good movie. Good movie. Scotland, you know, Scotland forever. All right. Anyway, we've got Macadon now. He's still got his dudes in square formation over here, firing at something. Uh, well, it says they're firing at something. I think they're just standing there. Uh, he's just kind of chilling. He's got the rest of his forces falling back this way. He does have the Thurio Spears here now taking control of the battering ram. We've got some Massilian Axe Warriors now blocking the, I guess, the Ballista. I don't think this Ballista's fired a single round. But they're getting shot at by the arrow tower. Fire damage now at 24... or 25% now. But he is waiting for the rest of his siege towers to advance towards the wall. The wall has actually broken down here in this section. 
And, you know, just a really slow advance. It's about almost 10 minutes into this fight, and we are now seeing the advancement of the attackers. I do apologize if I stop moving the camera around. Gotta take a sip of that lemonade, you know. It's good. Good. Alright, we got some militia hoplites now. Moving up. I'm gonna go through the breach, and we have Hillman there to meet them. This arrow tower is putting out work. He's, he's firing all over the place. He's firing left, he's firing right, he's firing straight ahead. Alright, here we go. Infantry clash inside the settlement. Macadon, the first one in the walls, just took a massive peel of volley. Hillmen are actually going to fall back here. And these militia hoplites doing their job of a low tier, low cost unit here. They're soaking up all the javelins from just about all these units. We've got some Bloodsworn charging in here. I'm gonna go ahead and charge right into them. Soaking up even more Pila and actually getting engaged. Oh, artillery shell coming in. This unit of the militia hoplites is taking javelin fire as well. Oh my gosh. Lost almost 40 men already. They're gonna get charged into now. Sword band. And we've got Thorax Swordsmen from Macadon now on the walls, engaged into some sword band who are now also going to retreat from the wall. We do have Macadon actually pushing that Thurio Spear on the battering ram towards this gatehouse. We'll see if he actually gets through the gatehouse. We do have a unit of Chosen Sword Band over there. So that'll be interesting to see. Massilia has now lined up all of his siege towers. And he's actually coming off of the siege towers here. He's just wanting to block that ballista. Oh, excuse me, what kind of a voice crack? Trying to block that ballista there. But he's got the rest of his siege towers. He could land. I really hope they don't just try to funnel everybody through this gap. That's going to be really bad. They're just going to get choke pointed out. You know. It's a really, really small choke point, you know. But it looks like Massilia is going to give the order to get off of the siege tower here. Here comes... Oh, wait, we actually have Hillman already engaged, but here comes some sword band going into the fight. Thorax Swordsman to meet the charge on the walls here. We even have some Roman Hastati now joining the fight. Three units, it looks like it, coming off of the siege towers onto the walls. Actually, a fourth unit right here. Rome wasting no time to assist his Macedonian ally. That's a lot of Hastati. You guys need to get off the walls, get get in here, spread out, fan out. Send one unit this way, get in there, send one unit this way, another this way, you know. Punch a hole, because if you can, ooh, nice artillery shot. If you can get them to hold right here, you have this to get behind them, you know, engage one unit that way, and then get in behind with uh, that way, you know what I'm saying? A lot of X's and O's on the drawing board. But the Hillmen are going to go ahead and route. 74 kills, not too bad. Swordband losing decisively against the Thorax Swordsman. With the Hastati now joining the fray, I think it is all but lost for this outer wall here. Hastati are not going to turn around. They're going to they're going to go ahead and face the Hillmen. That's more Hastati. Just kind of moving around, joining the fight. We've got some Axe Warriors from Massilia now. Marching in. Actually, we have two units of Axe Warriors. We've got one engaged into the Eastern Spearmen. Literally exactly what I just said. Engage this unit and use another one to get behind. Fantastic movement there by the attackers. Now they're going to get behind a Bloodsworn and Sword Band. Oh yeah, we've got... We've got Axe Warriors pinning units between some Hastati. I mean, Hastati's not the greatest unit, but they will do some damage. Just don't let them get outflanked. Their morale is very low. And they can easily rout with over 100 men, so... I've seen it a few times, especially on the channel. Protect your flanks, and your Hastati will perform. But it seems the attackers have just... Oh my gosh, they've surrounded every unit over here. Iceni now sending in the sword band. 
Oh, hold up. Outside the walls, we've got Thurio Spears getting charged out. We've got Ambushers and the Chosen Sword Band charging out and killing the Thurio Spear as they tried to push the Battering Ram. And that's going to be it for that unit. I mean, they got a bunch of Arrow Towers. Probably going to take some friendly fire there from the Arrow Towers. Might want to just pull off and let the Arrow Towers finish them off. But there goes Makadon's push for the Gatehouse. It is lost. But they have made quite the foothold in the settlement here. They have effectively engaged these units, and they have opened up a route for them to get units into the settlement through the breach without being stopped. And a lot of the defending units are routing. We have four defending units routing here. Oh, well, they're wavering, I should say. They're going to gather their courage. They're going to stand and fight. We've got, we've got some flaming arrows over there or something going into the arrow tower. We're going to try and burn that down. Nice, effective arrow fire coming in. We do have what appears to be some longbow hunters up there on the on the hill there. Firing it down into the tops of these units. We have Axe or Celtic Warriors breaking, not Axe Warriors. More Celtic Warriors routing over there. Iceni sending in more sword band trying to stop the Roman Hastati push. Over here we've got Eastern Spearmen. Yep, they're wavering. Got Club Levy holding the line. And we got arrow fire coming in from the attackers now into these sword band units. Sword band are lightly armored, so that arrow fire is going to cause some serious damage. Attackers do seem like Macadon seems to have a lot of units over here just kind of sitting there. Uh, that's three. That's yeah, that's a lot of units. That's like five units. It's got two militia hoplites, a Thurio spear, and two thorax swordsmen just kind of stand in there facing the wrong way. Uh, I think that's an opportunity missed because with all these units, you could easily assist in pushing this out that way, and with the spare units taking this here, pushing through this way, pushing this way. You gotta push your advance, and you gotta push the advantage that you gain as an attacker. Any opportunity you have to gain an advantage, you have to take it because you are against the odds. Even though you are, you know, usually having more funds as the attacker, you are against the odds because they have arrow towers, and they usually have a better firing position for their skirmishers into your attacking infantry. So, any opportunity you can get to gain an advantage, you need to do it. We've actually got Club Levy charging these Thorax Swordsmen that are facing the wrong way. They're in Shield Wall facing the wrong way. I'm actually going to turn around and charge into something else. What do we got over here? More Thorax Swords and Axe Warriors. Interesting to see so far. 37 minutes left in the battle. And we've got about, what, almost 10 minutes of combat, and the defending units are you know, starting to thin out here. Not a whole lot of troops here. we got some reserves being sent up. We've got Chosen Sword Band coming in, more Hillmen. Over here, we've got Evocati Cohort taking out the Ballista unit. We've got Hillmen right there, Syrian Heavy Archers firing into something. Maybe the, yeah, the Gallic Hunters there. And we've got a fight under the Arrow Tower, Club Levy into Thorax Swordsman. Did you see a lot of units start to run? Are they breaking? Oh my gosh, they are. 60 men, oh no, all the club levy is breaking. We've got three units of club levy routing from the field. And over here we've got Thorax Swordsmen now surrounding the Chosen Sword Band. Hillman over here fighting to hold the line. 
they're over here fighting. They have no idea that their right flank has fallen. Like, fight on, guys, fight on. Get these Greek people off of our city. Get them out of here. Get them out. Oh my gosh, all the javelins coming in. Oh, poor man, poor boy. Poor boy, he was young. He was just a young lad. Yeah, can you imagine being over here fighting? You're just like holding your line against just tremendous amounts of, you know, enemy forces coming in. Just endless flood of troops pouring into your city. You got to fight more and more guys. And you have no idea that your, your other flanks have already completely fallen. And the rest of the troops actually are starting to fall back towards the center of the settlement. We do have two units of Chosen Sword Band up here. Along with, uh, I think, two units of Slingers. This Slinger has not seen combat. Has probably full ammo. But this Chosen Sword Band, 65 kills, and they are completely surrounded by Thorax Swords. Over here, we've got Hillman routing now. Evocati Cohort, two units. Gonna crush those guys relatively easy. Thorax Swords now as well. They're all moving up to capture that Arrow Tower. I see he's gonna try and hold this point here, this hill. I would say the best way to hold this so you don't get shot in the side or the back. Uh, I would say use your infantry, hold like this. Because your front is still predominantly exposed. You know what I mean? Like the front of your unit is still predominantly exposed. So that when they fire arrows, they're gonna get hit. Or they're gonna hit the shields mostly, most of the time. All right, you're gonna, you're gonna hit most mostly shields. Uh, what the heck is going on here? Chosen Sword Band trying to chase the Thorax Swords that actually ended up getting into the Slingers. They were too slow to block the gap. Akadon's Militia Hoplites. Okay, they're going to kind of do a bit of a pull-through here. I mean, I don't know if you'd classify that as a pull-through. I mean, they were in column formation on the side, but I, I don't know. That's a little... That's a little a little spotty there for me, but... Yeah, all right. This is a good spot here. This is a good spot. Just kill these Thorax Swords and then reform your line to defend this right here. The Arrow Tower will keep firing and you've got Slinger support. Because when you're standing like this, right? Like as I was saying, if you're standing right here, the front of your troops, or predominantly the front of your troops, is exposed to the Skirmishers instead of like holding here where your side is completely exposed to archer fire from here. And if you stand, well, actually, he's going to fall back and hold right here. You're going to see a prime example. If you hold right here, not only will it be the kind of like the side of your troops that are exposed, but it's also sword side. Sword side, I, I don't know what it is. I guess it's just, you know, arrows, you know, hit you more, I guess. I don't know. We, we have some guys that have done some testing here, and apparently if you fire into the sword side of a soldier or a unit, they die faster. Because, you know, the shield's on the other arm. But if you fire into the shield side, they die less. Pretty interesting stuff. Sorry about that, kind of just like ranted for little to no reason, I guess. But we've got some Chosen Sword Band trying to hold the line. We've got some Thorax Swords making excellent use of the gap between the two units, and they're going right for the Skirmishers. Over here, we've got some Sword Masters fighting Evocati Cohort. Question is, how much are the defenders going to invest here? Because this is falling. The moment this falls, all these archers are going to get up here onto this. It's like wall here and just fire down. All right, over here we've got Evacuti Cohort just kind of walking around capturing arrow towers. We've got more sword masters over here, along with Club Levy and some longbow hunters that are actually out of ammo with over 200 kills. But we've got two units of legionary cavalry and a unit of thorax swords. Probably going to bust through that rather quickly. But up here... The Chosen Sword Band. Routing from the field. This final unit holding holding their line. They're going to turn and charge into the Thorax Swords. 
They're now getting shot in the back by arrow fire. I don't know if you guys can see the arrows. I do turn off, like, the arrow streaks just because I don't like... I don't like seeing it. It looks kind of gross. I like to see the arrows coming down. It looks more realistic, I guess. But yeah, this unit, not going to hold on well. Surrounded by three units and taking arrow fire. 126 kills. They were somewhat effective, but they could have been made better use if they held right here, like I said. You know, if you can do whatever you can to get your troops to have the most of their front side facing the enemy skirmishers, please do it. You'll save a lot of your own troops' lives. Ah, another sip of lemonade. Fantastic. This episode was brought to you by Mike's Lemonade. No, I'm playing. All right. We've got some Legionary Cav charging into the Swordmasters. And then over here we've got Evacati Cohort fighting even more Swordmasters. This is a very expensive upfront fight here from Swaby, putting these very powerful units by themselves to hold this side of the map. But the center here is falling. We've got Swordmasters still fighting. Evacati Cohort losing decisively. we got Arrow Fire coming in from the right there. Gallic Hunters firing. Trying to get into the fight here, because I know it's, like, angled weird. And just like that, the attackers have taken this section of the wall. They're actually firing up into the backs of these Swordmasters now. Who have used Headhunt, so... 86 of them remaining. But they're starting to drop like flies. We got Arrow Fire coming in, hitting them from two sides now. Over on this flank, we've got both units of Swordmasters now falling back from the fight. We've got some Longbow Hunters here trying to be a distraction. Thorax Swords are going to get into the Swordmasters to try and stop them from retreating. Swaby's probably seen it, like, how oh, this is falling. Gotta fall back my dudes. And I gotta say, this looks like a lot of defenders here for this final point. I mean, I don't know the rules that these guys went with, but I usually say in my lobbies, you know, seven max people on the final point or something like that. But... Anyway, everybody fights the way they fight. It's alright. We're just here for a good time and some good battles. Uh, Massilia is going to pull back one unit of Thorax Swords and continue the chase with the other, running down the Swordmasters as they try to fall back. We've got Rome's General charging them down. Swordmasters are going to turn and face them. Going to get a few kills on that charge. This is very, very ballsy here from Rome's general. Headhunt from the Swordmasters now going down. We've got arrow fire here from Longbow Hunters. Going to take out a few of those. If Rome was not watching that, I think his general would have probably died right there. That was a crazy ballsy move right there. Never really seen somebody just charge their small general's bodyguard into an elite unit like that. But hey, Rome is fearless. We got Swordmasters here soaking up some Pila from the Evocati cohort, and they're going to get charged into by the Militia Hoplites. Imagine being this small little, like, Militia man. You got conscripted, you picked up your, your grandfather's spear and shield. And you come out here and you just start messing up some of Germania's best units. Like you, like that one guy that stabbed one of the Swordmasters in the neck with a spear. Like, you just fought somebody who's probably seen hundreds of battles. You know, the hardened by multiple battles. An elite fighter and you just got killed by some dude. You got killed by some dude named Frank. From like, some peasant farm in the middle of Greece. What a shame. What a shame. You bring shame to Germania. Disgusting. Okay, so... 
We actually have the Greek Onager in the city. They have 40 kills already. So it does seem that they have used some of their ammo. Don't know if they've fired yet. But I want to say they have. They have got 40 kills. Pushing it into the city. But oh my gosh, look at all the attackers now streaming into the city. They're now in the center of the settlement here. But the defenders seem to have quite a few troops left. We've got, what is that? I see somebody doing quick reload or precision shot. Syrian heavy archers, what are they firing into? What are they firing into? What are you guys firing at? Let's follow, let's follow your arrow. Ooh, excuse me, I have hiccups. Let me follow your, let me follow your arrow volley here. No? Not firing? All right, never mind, they're not gonna be firing. All right, this is a good spot to hold on this settlement, holding this little choke point here, because you have this arrow tower right here that will fire into anybody in this section. So, free arrow tower, free damage. Only thing you have to work out, or only thing you have to look out for is enemy archers moving themselves up right here and taking out anything you have in reserve right here. Um, if I was Swaby here, I would probably pull back my longbow hunters and wait for the attackers to waste their ammo on my heavily armored infantry like these shield bearers and save the archers for the end. But, I mean, we do have some Syrian heavies back here, so I don't really think it matters. But longbow hunters getting torn to pieces by the arrows here. Actually moving up. What are they doing? Okay, never mind. They're going to go ahead and retreat now. But we have reached the great standstill. People facing off. This is the moment in the battle where people have all of their, you know, tattered, destroyed units assemble as the front line and then just send them in to try and weaken and tire out the opponent's front line before sending in the fresher, more full tier units. Yeah. Fresher, fuller units. Like this, Avocati Cohort, sending into the Chosen Sword Band. Gonna let them do their damage, and then once they route, you know, send in the big full unit. But this right here is gonna be tough to get through. These shield bearers, man. 115 armor. Definitely gonna want to save some javelins for that. Oh, hello, we've got the Onager moving up here. Oh, man. Macadon. Macadon, Macadon. Look at you, moving up your Onager. And I gotta say, this is a prime target up here. Any of these are actually pretty prime targets, but this right here... Right, I'm gonna say this now, especially since we have the Onager moving up, this looks like a prime target. If you see your ally and they have any of their units within your own unit at any point, you know, just let your ally hold that point. Just fall your unit back like 10 feet, you know, form up like right here or something. Do not, please do not double up your units like this because that makes them more susceptible to arrow fire and you're going to get absolutely obliterated by some freaking onagers. Look at that. Oh my gosh. If he was on flaming shot too, it would be way worse. But he is going for this. You see what I'm saying? Look at this. Don't do this, guys. It's a silly mistake, but just swallow your pride. Retreat your unit. You can let your ally take the front line. You know, there's no use to have two units here die for pretty much nothing in return. These two units have not seen combat, or at least much of it, and they're going to just get torn apart by this artillery because the defenders don't look like they're moving. Cut them down! So Lucid is sending up some archers, but over here we've got Evocati Cohort and Thorax Swordsmen still engaging the Chosen Sword Band. We have about 21 and a half minutes left.
Do not go quietly, my brothers. Oh, what the heck happened here? He sent in the Syrian heavy archers. I'm actually taking some peel rounds. What's throwing at him? Oh, snap. The royal peltist here from Macedon. I don't even think he realizes his general's firing. Wasting ammo on some Syrian heavies that are out of ammo. Kind of funny. Are they out of ammo? Oh my gosh, he wasted all of his Pila on some archers that are already out of ammo, too. The Thorax Swordsman now moving up. Now separating from the Chosen Sword Band. 137 kills on this Onager. These guys have lost, in conjunction with each other, I want to say nearly 100 men between the two of them. We've got Massilian Thurial Spears now moving up to assist. We've got some Thorax Swordsmen and First Cohort that are actually in attacking Testudo, waiting their turn to get into the fight. Evocati Cohort now being cycled out. Or not the Evocati Cohort. Evocati Cohort engaged into Chosen Sword Band that has now been cycled out with a fresher unit. That is what I was trying to say. And this Chosen Sword Band is now going to fall back. Shield Bearers might be taking the front fight here. Then you got to be careful. you got to be careful here, guys. This is open. That is now open. And it's only a matter of time. Do the attackers see it? All right, the defenders are going to march their Shield Bearers forward slowly. Getting engaged. It is still open, guys. This is a column formation nightmare. Seleucid needs to take his guys out of Hoplite Wall and just spread them across the length of the opening. Don't give them the opportunity. We've got Syrian archers over here firing into what is essentially the front of these shield bearers. We've got javelins from the sword band firing overhead. Got some more Evocati cohort moving up. Got some militia hoplites routing from the field. Oh my gosh, these guys took way more losses. Oh my, how many have they killed? 222 kills for the Onager. They must have moved their infantry back on top of each other once again. Yeah, I mean, he's got some Gallic Hunters just kind of hold him in place, but he's going to tear apart these Chosen Sword Band and these Thorax Swords with that artillery. We've got the Chosen Sword Band charging into the Militia Hoplites. Even with only 50 men left in the unit, these Chosen Swords are going to destroy these Hoplites. Got Thorax Swords over there, moving around. They're going to go ahead and get engaged into Makadon's General. At least the sword band are going to start getting some kills before they die. They weren't completely useless. The shield bearers have actually pushed back the attackers. As you can see, they had their battle line drawn somewhere around right here. They've actually pushed forward good maybe like 20 feet. Like in-game 20 feet maybe, like 20 yards, something like that. Over here, Macadon just kind of cleaning up the dudes. He actually has his general getting shot at by some archers that are up here. Syrian heavies firing in. I mean, they got to be careful. They have to save some ammo on their archers. You know, you got to be careful. You got, 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 hard. you got, you got, you got, you got, you got, you I mean, like, look at all this infantry you still gotta get through. You gotta get through all this infantry, you gotta get two, you gotta get through two Thorax Pikemen, and then you have the Armored Elephants. What do you use your ammo on? You know what I mean? You got, like, thick sword units. Thick sword units? You got the Pikemen and the Elephants. Like, what do you use your ammo on? But overall, not really a whole lot happening. We do have more Chosen Sword Band. Oh, no, that's still the same unit. They're going to go ahead and take a nice position here on the slope. 
Maybe get some peeler rounds out. That shield bearer is getting thin. I don't really think they've killed a lot of guys either. That was a lot of arrow fire that just came by. Chosen sword band getting ripped into by three units of Syrian archers. And here come the attackers. They see the opening. And they're going to exploit the opening. That sword band is going to be moments from breaking. And you've got units that now have the ability to just column formation into the fight. Or around the fight here and get into the flanks of that engagement there. And move this way. And just like that, the defenders are going to fall back more units. We've got sword band, heroic nobles, levy freemen, and a sword band falling back. Massilia going to go ahead and capture the tower. Very good move there. Swordmasters with headhunt on. Well, now expiring, but, you know, they're in the fight. Rome kind of being the front line here, as he should. Rome has the most elite infantry. Use that infantry to cut a hole and allow his allies to do the cleanup. But look at that. All these units now column formation. Moving through. Wait, what is Seleucid doing? Seleucid's got two units of Thorax Swordsmen, his two units of Thorax Pikemen, his three Archer units, and his General. They're all on the move. Where are they going? I mean, we got 14 minutes left in the fight. Okay, they're going outside the settlement. I'm wondering if he's going to try and keep his guys, like, right here so they remain hidden. And then when the enemy gets up here, they're going to just, like, charge out and, like, hit them as, like, a flanking thing? I have no idea. This is very interesting. Haven't seen somebody do this before. Red and Slingers up there. We've got more Longbow Hunters. <laughs> so Luke is just like, peace out, guys. We're out of here. Actually, they're still going. Where are they going? So Luke, what are you doing, buddy? The victory point's right here. I think Seleucid, paired with his barbarian allies, saw that the, the battle was not going their way and just said, Peace out, guys. I'm leaving. Oh my god, they're just leaving. Oh wait, nope. Hold on. They got an order. Okay, wait, I can see their move orders. Are they going around? Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, the attackers. They haven't captured this gatehouse. Seleucid is going to try and bring his guys all the way around and through this gatehouse and get behind the attackers. That's really, really risky because Iceni and Swaby do not have a lot left. We've got some sword masters, some berserkers, two spear wall, some hex bearers. I mean, we don't have a whole lot of infantry left here. Uh, Swordmaster. I mean, this would have been a much better place to hold right here, I think. IMO, because if you line up right here, they're just going to get shot in the back. But the Swordmaster is just kind of charging out. What are they doing? Okay, here we go. Okay, I can't really tell where the Swordmasters are because they're, like, spread out all over the place. They're attacking, like, three units at once. Oh, that's not cool. I get they're kind of spread out, but dude, that looks like a little bit of a pull through. You guys decide. Was that was that a bit of a pull through? Because now that I'm looking at it, I see most of the sword masters kind of like right here, and he just kind of walked right through them. Well, that's a little lame because he just pulled that sword through, and now they can get behind the sword masters. Well, what are you gonna do? Oh, the attackers are actually going to go ahead and try and burn down this arrow tower. What are they throwing at that? Is that arrows? Those are light peltists. Interesting use of the light peltists. 
Again, I don't see the necessity in burning this down like that because right now you're just wasting ammo. You have all these attackers up here. You know, just, just bite the bullet. You know, let this unit capture the tower. Let these two units die. And now you have something that you can save these javelins for, which are the pikemen or the spearmen. But, I mean, the pikemen are outside. Is Saluka going to have enough time to pull this off? He's got all his dudes outside the walls. But are they going to have enough time to get around and get in here and get up here and make a difference? I have uh, no clue. But Massilia is going to go ahead and capture this arrow tower. Over here, the attackers have also captured that arrow tower. We've got the berserkers with four men left. And then we've got the swordmasters with about 50 men left. And here come the foot companions. Okay, they're just kind of walking. Walking in. A bit of a pike stack, but let's not talk about that, shall we? What kind of uncultured swine would dare pike stack in my glorious Roman game? No, I'm just kidding. It don't really matter. I mean, this is this is like a unit of 35 guys. It's not really a pike stack. They're just dying. But uh, sword masters fought the good fight. They are now breaking, and we've got Swaby's general now going to hold this line, fighting the thorax swordsman. Thorax swordsman going to go ahead and try and pull back. Swaby going to give chase. We have nine minutes left. And it's looking pretty grim here. Because if the attackers are able to kill Swaby's general, break through these two units of spear wall, and then just clean this up here, they have two units of foot companions that can just sit right here and face that way. And then they can just have the counter run down. The archers are not going to get able, or get able, the archers are not going to be able to get through the foot companions with the amount of armor they have in time to stop them from capturing the settlement. So they got to be careful here. This is a very, very ballsy move. I thought Rome's general charging in was a ballsy move. This is incredibly ballsy. I mean, his units are pretty much exhausted at this point. So, will they even make much of a difference? Would it have even been smarter to just hold here? Like, was this really necessary? Because you could potentially lose the battle here. Swaby's general is losing decisively. But he's going to go ahead and... I think, what is he, just use the curse from the hex bearers? We had some archers shooting a point blank in the side. The archers are going to get charged into by the hex bearers. Oh my gosh, just straight slaughtering them. Gonna fall back, though, through the pike line. I mean, you got foot companions right there. What are you gonna do, chase them? Got some peltists now moving up. Macadon has now moved ahead and reforming his foot companions. And Swaby wants no part of it. They have recaptured this arrow tower. It's firing in all directions. And over here, we've got Spearwall now fighting the Thorax Swordsman. All right, the Foot Companions are advancing. They're also going to be capturing this arrow tower. Uh, very nice. Oh, wait, hold up. We got the elephants in now. They are stampeding. They killed, I think, one unit of Gallic Hunters. We got some Thurio Spears, though. Throwing into them. They are stampeding. They've lost all control, and they have set their sights on Seleucid's own archers. Oh, my gosh. Is this how it's going to end? Seleucid's running for his life. Here comes the archers, or here comes the elephants. Run, archers, run. Oh? Oh my. 
What a move. Or what what a what a timing moment that is. The elephants are going to no longer be running berserk. They're gonna finally go ahead and you know reform. Could have been could have been really bad. That could have been the loss of two archer units and two thorax swordsmen. Do got to be careful. This arrow tower here, as well as this one up here, are firing into these units as they you know make their move through this area. Don't know where Seleucid is sending his general. Kind of needs to get those elephants back over here and into the fight. But over here we've got Chosen Sword Band. Just fighting the archers. Attackers are now getting desperate. Sending in their, their skirmishers to do the fighting. I mean, looking at it... This could go either way. If Makedon manages his foot companions very well, he could probably clean all of this up and defend. But at the same time, Rome is just about out of infantry. Massilia doesn't have a whole lot left himself. And really all Makedon has is nearly half a Thurio spear, two foot companions, and his general. But he's going to go ahead and send his general in. The balance of power was actually in favor of the defenders right now. Makedon's going to fall his general back, and here come the foot companions. Foot companions cheering as they advance their phalanx. And just like any smart player would, Iceni is not going to engage the front line of their phalanx. He keeps falling back as he should. Yep, keep falling back. Don't even don't even think about fighting it. I mean you got arrow fire coming in now too. That's a cheeky little spot right there. Rome's got a nice spot. I mean he could have engaged the phalanx and he would have been getting shot in the back. They're not going to open up some Pila into these foot companions. Swaby's general looking almost completely dead here. Banner tattered, 75 men left. Got to be careful. Whoa, what the heck? 122 melee defense because they're in shield screen? That's insane. All right, Seleucid. It's now or never, bro. You got three and a half minutes. I mean, looking at it numerically, I think the defenders have this one in the bag. Because, I mean, I, I don't think the attackers have anything to do. Or, I don't think they have anything to deal with these elephants that are here now. And they definitely don't have anything to deal with these pikemen. They've used up just about all of their skirmishers. I mean, he's using his peltists right now. On these, uh, on these Swaby General. Swaby's General is actually still alive. Foot companions coming around that side. I'm gonna go ahead and surround these guys. What's the move, Seleucid? What is the move? We got two and a half minutes left. And the attackers are making a push for the final town square. Or the final victory point town square. These foot companions are not facing the right way. They got their backs turned to the chosen sword band. Rome sending in his general once again. Swaby's general dead. Or Rome sent- did I say Swaby's general charging in? Maybe Rome's general charging in? Sorry. General recently died for Swaby. Swaby's units are starting to waver. But yeah, I couldn't remember if I just said Swaby's general charging in or if I said Rome. I meant Rome. Royal Peltists engage into the Chosen Sword Band. Getting hit by some Pila right in- right point blank in the side. They're going to turn ahead and charge up the hill into him. Interesting. And here comes Seleucid. He's got two units of Thorax Swords now. One engaged into the Massilian Hoplites and Thurio Spears. The second one kind of acting as a backup. He's got his archers firing up and over into Massilia's general as well. Rome has invested everything he's got into taking out these final spear wall. Foot companions are wavering. He's just outnumbered. He's getting outmaneuvered here. I think Massilia's general just died. Yep, Massilia's general is dead. 
Is Rome's general dead? Nope, Rome's general's still alive. We got a minute left, and here come the armored elephants. I will say that I think the attackers have lost this battle. Defenders will hold on. Here come the hex bearers. I'm gonna go ahead and get a mass intimidation curse or something, lowering their morale. And here comes a stampeding charge of the elephants. Not a very intense charge. That guy's going in. That guy's got the right idea. The rest of these guys, I think they, they forgot the memo. But there we go. Oh, we've got a mass route. All right. I guess that'll do it for this siege. The attackers put up a good fight. I mean, they had, they had it really well here. They were pushing out the defenders from this point. At the very beginning, they had a really good foothold. They were killing a lot of units very quickly. And they even just, they just took over the whole city. But when it got to these points here, I guess they just kind of struggled and used up too much infantry trying to break through. But, I mean, look at the fighting here. We got some nice, some nice carnage here in the outer walls. Much, much fighting going on here. And then we have kind of like a little... Little skirmishes here and there, and then we have, you know, our major battle lines at the standard choke points. But overall, I will say that was a good fight. Attackers fought well. The defenders just fought better. But let's go ahead and look at the battle results. And starting us off, we have the one and only man who sent in this battle replay, Demonic Flame as Iceni, and then we have Bandit as Massilia, we have Wraith as Seleucid, Grom as Rome, Atnis as Swaby, and Sultan as Macedon. If you guys need to, make sure you guys go ahead and pause the video at any moment so you guys can look at the troops' kills individually. But I hope you guys enjoyed this siege battle. If you made it this far, please feel free to leave a like on the video. Maybe sacrifice a comment to the YouTube gods. Helps me out. I greatly appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That's all I got for y'all today, and I'll catch you all later.